In this video, I beat Terraria as a pescatarian. Wait, 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 how does one become pescatarian in Terraria? Well, for this playthrough, I will only be using weapons that are fish, so weapons like this, this, or this. So, with the intro out of the way, let's get into the video. When I spawned in, I knew that I needed to get a weapon, but with fish weapons only, my choices this early on were limited to weapons that are fished up, like the rockfish or swordfish, so I knew that I had to prioritize fishing in the early game, even though I absolutely despise fishing. I went underground and proceeded to get chased down by a worm in total darkness like it was a horror game. However, I then made the intellectual move of booking it and moving far away until the worm despawned. I found a shark pet that seemed very fitting for this playthrough, and then I mined a few ores here and there. I went back up to the surface and constructed absolute masterpieces of NPC houses. And then I waited out the entire night because I was very very scared of the zombies outside my house. I then crafted a golden pickaxe. Never mind, I guess I misclicked and crafted a gold axe instead. Oh my goodness. I made a fishing pool and then fished until I got the rockfish. I then used a gravitation potion to find floating islands, but I didn't really find anything good except for this balloon. When I eventually ended up in the ocean, I decided that I might as well fish. And this was a great decision because I fished up the swordfish, adding another weapon to my arsenal. I drank another gravitation potion to explore the other side of the sky, and I found a star fairy and horseshoe. I went back in the mines and was able to mine enough gold for a full set of gold armor, and I also got enough life crystals to become juiced up to the maximum with 400 HP. I decided that now was finally the time to fight the Av Cthulhu. I had to stay close to damage it, but I was able to take the hits just fine, and eventually I took it down. Since I still had 5 minutes of potions left, I didn't want to waste them because I'm just that good at the game. So I broke shadow orbs and spawned the Eater of Worlds as well. And just like the eye, I was able to easily tank the boss and I quickly defeated the Eater of Worlds. I bought a mini shark from the arms dealer for a very very cheap price. I mined some hellstone and then crafted some new gear out of it. And then I went to bed for some nice, well deserved sleep and rest. Never mind. Usually, I hate having to fight blood moons, but this one ended up being okay since I got the shark tooth necklace, which would help increase my damage. I spawned in the goblin army and chopped up all the goblins into bite sized pieces, making a stew out of goblin meat. Obviously, I didn't eat it because I was a pescatarian. But I did throw the boiling hot stew onto the goblin tinker's bald blue head, causing him to suffer third degree burns in his cranial region. I made an arena for the boner boy and spawned him in. Now, this is the part where I would usually say something like Skeletron boning me, but then I bone him instead. But I already said that joke, like two times already. So, um, I don't know what to say here, but I did beat him. Yeah. I went inside the dungeon and got a cobalt shield. Then, when a meteorite landed, I went to it mined the meteorite and crafted meteor bullets. I went back to the dungeon to collect bones and then crafted the necro set. I fought King Slime for the slime mount so I could fall down the elevator faster. I then made a platform for the wall of flesh fight, but I didn't want to fight the wall just yet. Instead, I made a fishing pool in the corruption before entering hard mode so that I wouldn't have to deal with the hard mode enemies. You might know why I'm making this fishing pool already, but if not, don't worry, you'll see. I spawned in the wall of flesh. The mini shark did a very good job against the wall, especially due to the meter bullets being able to pierce through the hungries. Eventually, I was able to take the wall down. Here we go again. I went to the corruption fishing pool I made before Harnboat, fishing until I eventually got a toxic heart. I then got scammed by the goblin tinker with these absolutely horrendous reforges. And then, to quench the flames of my extreme rage, I went to destroy some altars. I bought some crimson seeds from the dryad for later use and then went mining, eventually being able to craft a nice full set of adamante armor. I then made a crimson farm that would help me get Icor, Souls of Night, and Souls of Light. So yeah, it's a very good farm for early hard mode. I then killed a couple of wyverns and crafted the demon wings. After all that preparation, it was finally time to fight the mechs. I first spawned in the twins. As Spasmatism tried spewing his toxic green flames on me, I fought back with my very own toxic green bubbles, easily taking care of him. Ratnazer was the same story, being able to easily kill him. I decided to make a bit of a longer platform for a Skeletron Prime, and when night struck, I spawned him in. Honestly, I wasn't too sure of how the Toxic Carp was going to do against Skeletron Prime, but my worries quickly vanished as I effortlessly chipped away at his health until he died. The Destroyer. 
First off, I knew that this fight would be kind of painful since the Toxic Heart can't pierce through enemies, but this fight was made even worse by the enemies spawning from the corruption, the lasers shooting at me, the probes flying around, and also my mouse disconnecting. Please subscribe so I can buy a new mouse. But I'm not a quitter. I recalled the wise words of ancient philosopher Nikkei 30, never back down, never give up. As I relentlessly pushed through the fight, I ignored all the pain I went through and eventually beat the destroyer. Thank you Nikkei 30. I crafted a Drax and then started the arena for Plantera. When a solar eclipse happened, I went to the surface to find mobs for the jungle keep, but I never got it. So I went back underground and made some final touch-ups to the arena. I then went to the ocean to find some sharks for the fins and then crafted a mega shark. I spawned in Plantera and easily peasily lemony squeezily defeated her first try. And then, for some reason, I was extremely dead set on getting the Piranha Gun. I thought that the Mega Shark wouldn't be strong enough to progress through the whole game. So, I farmed King Slime for pirate maps and kept on spawning pirate invasion after pirate invasion after pirate invasion, but to no avail. I got rich, but I didn't get any jungle keys. So, I decided to just suck it up and use the Mega Shark for the rest of the playthrough. I made a surface mushroom bound house for the truffle and mined enough chlorophyte and got enough mushrooms to craft a full set of shrimp armor. Then I went to the jungle temple, spawned the golem, and easily, easily killed him. The fight was not close at all, it was so, so easy. I farmed golem a few more times for both money and health potions, and then got a few truffle worms to fight Duke Fishron. I was trying to get the Fishron wings, but I wasn't able to, and honestly, I just wasn't feeling like fighting fish on 10 million times for a single drop. So I moved on and started making a huge platform for the Moonlord fight. While I was doing that, I ended up getting the Lilith's necklace, which made me into a wolf that could shoot bullets out of a shark in my mouth. Pretty cool stuff. When the platform was done, I went to the dungeon and attempted to cheese the lunatic cultist with this platform thingy. Unfortunately, it didn't really work, so I actually had to fight the cultist as intended. Ugh, this game sucks man, honestly. I was able to use the same pirate invasion lava pit for the vortex pillar, which was pretty cool. And then I made some kind of spawn chamber thingy for the nebula pillar, which I still ended up dying to, but I took down the nebula pillar eventually. For the solar pillar, I just used an ice rod to make this platform in the sky, which made the spawning of the solar enemies more bearable, and then I took down the solar pillar. After that, I used a unicorn statue to commit mass murder against the entire species of unicorns until I got the unicorn mount. Then, I went to the underground jungle to get enough life crystals to finally max out my HP to 500. Now, I was ready to take down the Stardust Pillar and fight the Moon Lord. I used the classic Star Cell Cheese, took down the Stardust Pillar, and waited for the Moon Lord to spawn. It was finally time to become the ultimate pescatarian.
that was actually the first time I beat Moonlord first try. And I did it with a Mega Shark. Well, thanks for watching.